let's talk about gases. Gases are a state of matter like solid or liquid, but gases have a lot of unique properties that are a little different from solids and liquids. In particular, the first thing to note is that the molecules or atoms that make up the gas are really far apart. Uh, if you think about a solid or a liquid, typically you think about the particles actually touching each other, whereas in, atoms are, uh, whereas in a gas, they're typically very far apart. Because of they're very far apart, uh, it turns out that gases are very compressible. That is, you squeeze on them and you can, you can decrease their volume quite a bit. Another property is that the particles fill all of the space. So if you're talking about a sample of gas, like this balloon I have here, um, we, we have to describe the volume of the balloon as where the gases are. And finally, the particles of gas are in motion. And some of them actually have really high velocities. And we'll talk about the distribution of the velocities later on. But the motion of these particles smashing into the walls of the balloon is what give the balloon, gives the balloon its shape. Now, the first quantity that we have to define, and I mentioned this a second ago, is the volume. And the volume we're going to use, the units of volume we're going to use is liters. Uh, if you're not familiar with a liter, a liter is about a quart. And um, it's related to a geometrical size, a cubic centimeter. One liter is equal to 1,000 cubic centimeters. Now, another quantity that we have to define for gases is pressure. And you have some familiarity with pressure. Um, if you've ever been in an airplane, okay, so here's our airplane, and we've got the planet here. It turns out that the weight of the atmosphere, and weight is a force, pressing down on the surface of the planet gives rise to what we call pressure. And at the surface of the planet, the pressure is about 14.7 pounds per square inch. That's to say that if you take a 15-pound bowling ball and you concentrate all of its weight on a one square inch uh, area, that's pressing down on us all the time. And we'll see the, the manifestations of that a little bit later. Now, you'll, you've probably experienced that when you go on an airplane ride, your ears pop. And the reason why your ears pop is because uh, the pressure at the surface of the Earth is not exactly the same as the pressure as you go up in an airplane to say 36,000 feet. And even people in Denver at 5,280 feet will notice a difference in atmospheric pressure. Why is that? The reason is, if you think about pressure being the weight of the air divided by the area, there's less air above you if you're at 36,000 feet than there is if you're at the surface of the planet. And less air, less weight, less weight, less pressure. So that's why your ears pop. And then when you go back down, when the airplane lands, after, uh, after having been up in the air for a while and your ears have acclimated to the lower pressure, then the increased pressure from landing the airplane, you really notice that and sometimes it's somewhat painful. All right, so we have this 14.7 pounds per square inch uh, and we'll convert that to a, to a metric unit later on. Why aren't we crushed by all the pressure? I mean, if there's all this pressure crushing down on us, why don't we just collapse into nothing? And the answer is, if you imagine that we have a drum or a, a tin can here, there's one atmosphere of pressure on the outside, but because it's open to the atmosphere, there's also one atmosphere of pressure on the inside, and those exactly counterbalance, and so this drum isn't crushed. But imagine what would happen if we took all of the air out of the inside. In other words, the outside's got one atmosphere, but the inside has zero atmospheres. Then what you might imagine is that 14.7 pounds per square inch is going to cause this thing to collapse. Okay, now let's take a look at that on this video. What I have here is a heavy wall steel solvent drum of the sort that we get solvents like acetone and ethyl acetate in. It's a 20 liter can, very heavy. And what I've done is I've put about a cup of water into it, into an identical drum sitting over here, and I've boiled that water. And you can see that it's boiling pretty vigorously. And now what I'm going to do is stopper the can with this rubber stopper and take it off the heat. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw some cups of ice on top to get it to cool down a little more quickly. And uh, let's see what happens. Hmm. 
Well, this looks like it might take a little while. So I think I'll go get a cup of coffee and come back and take a look at it. Okay, this baby is well on its way to being crushed. It's uh, going to keep going for quite some time. It's still almost too hot to touch. What this illustrated is that there is atmospheric pressure pressing down on us all the time. When we boiled the water, what we effectively did was we filled the can with water vapor. And the water vapor was at one atmosphere because the water was boiling, and it displaced all of the air that was inside the can. Then when we stoppered it, we sort of we closed the system, and then when we took it off the heat, what we did was we uh, started to allow the can to cool, the water cooled, the water vapor cools, and as it cools, the water vapor pressure goes down. And so, whereas there was one atmosphere of water vapor on the inside of the can when the water was boiling, and one atmosphere from all the way to the atmosphere pressing on the outside of the can so that the, can didn't, the sides of the can were perfectly fine, as the water cools, the pressure on the inside drops, the pressure on the outside is still the same. What has to happen? The can has to collapse. It has to get crushed by atmospheric pressure. And again, this will keep, I'll set it up, but it's going to keep going for quite some time. You can see that it's well on its way to being crushed much, much, much more than I could have done it by jumping on it or anything like that.